what was wrong with them? They say and they did not do. Um, they make uh, heavy burdens, and, but they don't do it. Um, it says in verse 4, um, they do what they do to be seen by people, verse 5. But all, they, all the works they do, they do to be seen of men. There's no sincerity in them. There's no real love for God. They want to be exalted and glorified in uh, verse 6 and 7. Uh, and they love the uppermost rooms in the feast and uh, the chief uh, seats in the synagogues and the greetings in the marketplace. We call the rabbi, rabbi. They love that stuff. That's what they like. It says, don't, don't be like them. Don't be like them. Uh, I'm going to keep your finger there. I'm just going to read a verse out of Galatians 5 about that and uh, about what they're like. Verse 26, let us not be envious of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. And, uh, and so um, the, it, that, that vain glory, they, they wanted to be exalted and glorified. Um, they were very worried about titles, verse 7 through 10. They let it go, rabbi, rabbi. And Jesus talks about that. Be not therefore called rabbi, uh, for one, one is your master, even Christ, and all your brethren. And, and uh, call no man father upon the earth. That goes to the Catholics too. Uh, for one is your father, which is in heaven. Neither be called masters, for one is your master. And notice the focus of this is you. Okay, they do this and this, but I want you not to be like them. They, 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 that's the way they are. Don't, don't imitate them. Don't, don't be haughty. Don't, don't go around and say, everybody call me by my, by my title. I like when I, you call me master. Don't be like them. Okay, don't, don't follow their actions. Good authority has their authority only to serve and help people go somewhere. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. You know, a good authority, the only reason they want authority is because they think they can take you someplace good. You can lead them to a good place, not because you like commanding people. And, uh, and, and it's like that. Then Jesus says, you know, it is not like the world thinks is different. Verse 11, but he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. He says, look, they all like being the authority. They like putting all these burdens on other people. They, they don't do. They just say. They like titles. They like to make wear these clothes that everybody that says that they have... <clears throat> great authority and it says it oh he's spiritual and he's got all these things on his clothing that says he's a rabbi and they want everybody to exalt them and give them the highest seat and it says but in god's kingdom the greatest among you is a servant not the leader now that's not worldliness but that's god's thinking verse 12 <coughs> he says <clears throat> and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. And there's humility. The greatest among you is servant. If you exalt yourself, you'll be abased. If you humble yourself, you're exalted. But the question is, what is humility? I've, I've had a, a little bit of a misunderstanding of humility. And let <clears throat> me separate a couple of things. I had humility and, and kind of a, a normal definition of humility. Um, like most people do, who, who have a casual knowledge of humility. But I had a statement that I've, I've always made, and it's not right exactly. The statement is not complete. But I say it to myself, and sometimes it comes out of my mouth to somebody else, and they usually misunderstand it. But I say a statement oftentimes to myself is, I don't matter. Now, I know that statement, if you break it down, you could say, technically, you do matter. You have a family. You have a ministry. You have you know, you matter to God, Jesus. I get that. But, but when I say it to myself, it, it's, it's me telling myself, you don't, you don't have any position. You don't have any reason you couldn't do that. The toilet needs scrubbed or, or the, you know what, they're standing there watching and you, you, you'll go do the job. It doesn't matter. You don't matter what you want, what's fun to you, what you want to spend your time doing, what you'd rather be doing. You don't matter. I say it all the time. Uh, and, and, you know, we'll, we'll be oftentimes on a, on, a, on a trip, and we'll plan on the trip, and we'll be talking to the nationals, and they'll be saying, you know, say, what needs done? And, and they'll say, well, da-da-da-da, there's some things over here, but that's really, really, really difficult. And I said, well, what need, just tell me what needs done. Just I'll, I'll sort through it all. And they say, well, there's this pastor way out in the boondocks, and he's, he's really discouraged, and, you know, he, he really needs, you know, somebody to encourage him. And, and, and I'll say, well, I'll go out there. No problem. They say, look, you, you know, you don't need to go out there, Pastor. It's your, you're not used to that kind of travel and da-da-da-da-da. And I say, look, I don't matter. 
bouncing around in the back of whatever I'm in doesn't matter to me. If I have to sleep out there, it doesn't matter. I don't matter. I could, I could, I could stay in the hotel, but I very rarely do. And, 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 and because I don't really matter, it's not about me. It's about God's kingdom. It's about souls. It's about other people. And 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 it really it you gotta. It's really hard to change this. But humility is actually when you take yourself and shove yourself down. It's not what you think about yourself. That's what, that's what the natural definition. But that's not actually the, the, the biblical definition. We see it in this passage. Okay, and, and and we see it in other passages. The word humble. Um, tapaneo, it means to depress. Now, when you think of depression, you, you think of depression. Depress means pushed down. Depression is when you are pushed down emotionally. You're stuck there, okay? It means to push down. It means to depress, push down, humiliate, or bring low. Humbling yourself is pushing yourself down. Let's look at this passage again. But he that is the greatest among you shall be your servant. Whosoever shall exalt himself, lift yourself up, show a base. But he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. Now let me take you, uh, let's go to James 4 and uh, take you around a little bit. I'm going I'm to define for a little while humility and, and maybe get us thinking a little differently than maybe what we thought. James chapter 4 and verse 10, it says, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. See, see the meaning there? When it, when, so when you're saying the Greek, you're saying humble, that means you're pushing yourself down. Humble yourselves, and then the Lord will lift you up. We're going to read Philippians 2. That's exactly what happened to Jesus. He humbled himself and became obedient to either death or the cross. Wherefore, God, God hath highly exalted him. Okay? Your job is to push yourself down. God will lift you up. Our natural inclination is to lift ourselves up, and then God has to push us down. But humility is pushing yourself down. It's putting yourself below. It's getting yourself so you're not lifting your head up and saying, what about me? I, me. It, it's, it's not that, and it's, it's not the way we do those things. It's you push yourself down, then God lifts you up. Just some thoughts, and, and the first one's the biggest one that'll, that'll define it the most and help us with this. Number one, it's not about putting yourself, or I'm sorry, it's all about putting yourself, let me read it, let me, I wrote this very sloppily, let me try it again, I'm being humbled. Um, it is about not putting yourself first. It is about not putting yourself first. Let's go to uh, Matthew, back to Matthew 23. It said that, and we're going to go to a lot of other passages all throughout the New Testament, and we'll be there. Matthew 23 and verse 11 says, But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. Whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. He says, well, you know what? Don't put yourself in the utter uh, utmost seat and, 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 and then get shoved down. It talks about in Proverbs. Jesus also said that. They love to put themselves here in the uppermost seat, but it's about not putting yourself First, First Corinthians chapter 10, let me take you there. First Corinthians chapter 10, it's about not putting yourself first. First Corinthians 10, there's several verses here. Um, but verse 23 says this, All things are lawful to me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. Let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. Of course, it's talking about uh, being blessed and, 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 uh, and, and helping them to be encouraged and to go forward. It says, don't, don't, don't worry about yourself. Don't seek your own wealth or blessing. Seek another man's wealth. Seek their blessing. Seek their happiness. If there's one drink of happiness there, you hand it to somebody else. That's humility. That's biblical humility. No, that, that doesn't mean I think bad of myself, but that's not what humility is saying in the Bible. It's pushing yourself down because you say, I want to be happy. And there's one candy bar and two of us. That's, that's, that's natural inclination. But God doesn't want you to do that. God wants you to push yourself down. And say, I'd rather you have, you have it than me. You know what? My flesh is really demanding that I do this. You know what? I know you love that candy bar. And you know, I'll be fine. I've had enough sweets. 
Because you can always say you've had enough sweets, amen? And, and so you just say, I've had enough sweets. It's, you have it. Look at verse, uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Uh, let's look at verse 32. <clears throat> it says, Giving, Give none offense, neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God, even as I... Uh, even as I please all men in all things, not seeking mine own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. It's so small. You say, I just don't like witnessing. <laughs> you, just, you just throw in their eternity to wherever because what you, are, you don't like. You've exalted yourself way too much. You need to push yourself down. I just don't want to go to church. Who? cares. Do you want to go to work every day? Do you want to change your baby's diaper? No, I never did. It's three years old. I still haven't done it. You, you got to do things whether you want to do it or not. Okay. Just because it's weird. In, in life, people understand, well, it doesn't matter if I want to or not. I got to pay my bills. I don't want to pay my bills. I would love to keep all my money. I'd rather not go to work. Okay. That's why I became a pastor. And, uh, and, and, and uh, I'd rather do, um, uh, there's a lot of things. But in, the, in realm, we say, but we have to. In the spiritual realm, it's like the authority just spoke. I don't want to read my Bible. I don't, and all, we all have to say, oh, you don't want to. I guess it's okay then. It doesn't matter. Push yourself down. Push yourself down. Uh, let's go to Romans 15. We're going to read this, and you'll see it a lot in the Bible when you start looking for it. And I've been, as I've been learning this thing, <clears throat> Romans 15, verse 1. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. For, uh, let's, where are we at? let's go to Romans 12. Be kind the affection one to another, with brotherly love, in honor, preferring one another. In honor, preferring, preferring one another means I'm, I'm giving you the preference. You want to sit in this chair or this chair? You want the front seat? Yeah, you have the front seat. I'll sit in the back. In honor. It's an honor for me to serve you. It's an honor to go ahead, you know what? You're, 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 you're talking to your friend there. Oh, don't worry about that. I know you need that stuff carried to your car. Just give me your keys. I'll carry it out. In honor, preferring one another. That's humility. It's about not putting yourself first. John 3, 30, John the Baptist said at the greatest, he says, he must increase, I must decrease. <laughs> the ultimate Humility. He's got a thriving ministry. Everybody's talking about him, and he says, all right, now, I've been doing this. I'm going this way. He's going to go up. He must increase. I must decrease. He did not put himself first. He didn't put his ministry first. He was going to rot in jail while Jesus was, had multitudes listening to him, and he said, awesome. Exactly what I wanted. And that's that's the ultimate humility. Paul had this problem. He wanted to send someone in the ministry to go take care of the Philippian church, but he couldn't find someone in New Testament times that was humble and cared about others. Look at Philippians chapter 2. That was humble and really cared about others and would push themselves down and put other people first because Paul needed someone to do that. Philippians chapter 2. <clears throat> Is I'm going to send Timothy, verse 19. And he says, For I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. For all seek their own, and not the things which are Jesus Christ. I said, Paul said, I get, I have to say, I'm sending Timothy because somebody's got I need to care for you real carefully. And everybody else in the ministry I know, all they care about is themselves. Goodness, what a pathetic thing that is. 
but you got to not put yourself first. Let's read this in Philippians 2, same chapter here. Let's look about Jesus, what he did. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 3. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness. There's that. By the way, that's the, that's the same word, root word um, for humility. Of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man in his own things, but every man also in the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Had this state of mind that Jesus had, who went and put others above himself? Who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of sinful men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even to the death of the cross. Wherefore, God hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, the name of Jesus. Every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Is that Jesus? You're talking a person who had to push himself down. He was God. And to push himself down below humanity and serve everybody. Jesus' whole life was walking around serving. You got leprosy? Let me heal you. You guys are hungry? Let me feed you. You got a disease? Let me take care of you. You're blind? Let me take care of you. You guys need trained? Let me train you. You have a demon in your child? Let me cast it out. You guys are in a storm? Let me take you out of the storm. Jesus, <laughs> he could have said, hey guys, just once, like, treat me like I'm God. But he pushed himself so far down that he became a servant. And now you can stick your head up and say, I deserve better than the way they treat me. So did Jesus. Probably a bit more than you. And then he pushed himself down, humbled himself, and said, I'll wash your feet. That's humility. Humility is we that are strong ought to bear the infirmity of the weak. Yes, I might be more talented. I might be smarter. I might be able to manipulate them. But you know what? I'm going to serve them. They think they're getting one away uh, with one to get me to do that job. But I could turn this around, but I'm not going to. I'm actually going to serve them. I'm going to do it gladly. My enemies bid me to go one, with them one mile. I'm going to humble myself and go with them two. I'm pushing myself down. I don't matter. The kingdom of God matters. I'm going to humble myself. That's what Jesus. Humility is not as much, oh, I'm so terrible, I'm so wicked. Humility is five candy bars, six people, and you are first in line, and you count, and you say, oh, I forgot. You know what? I got to go clean something back in the back room. That's humility. Not, okay, fine, you can have it. That's not humility. Humility is you don't even need to tell them you're doing it. Humility is you go ahead and get out of line and you go and say, I forgot, I got to call my wife. And you go call your wife and cry. That's my candy bar. And, uh, and, and, and you go and you just do it for God. Humility. Humility is serving. Humility looks more like I'm letting them do it. I'm not exalting myself. And you know what? I'm, I'm going to hold myself and become their servant and be a blessing to them because they need that. 1 Corinthians 13 says it in a little different way. I'm kinda, we're kind of walking a circle around this humility thing to give you a good picture of it because I want to help you get it. Love does this, charity, the curse, 1 Corinthians 13, the charity chapter. Verse 4, charity suffereth long and is kind, charity envieth not. <laughs> Here's the humility is. This is a crazy thing. They cut the cake, click, 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 and hand you your piece, and then your rival brother or sister gets a piece, and their piece is bigger. And you know what you do? You go, I'm glad they got the bigger piece than me. Charity envieth not. Charity envieth not. 
doesn't envy. Why? Because it's, it's, it's pushed itself down. You're happy if somebody else is happy. Why are they so lucky? Nobody does that for me. You need to learn humility and say, I'm really glad someone gave them that. They're really, they're really happy, and I'm happy they're happy. You know how petty most people are? Yes. <laughs> they got that thing. Why did she get him? She's probably nasty, really. <laughs> I mean, this, this pettiness where, where, you know, you see someone else who's attractive, and you say, I hope they trip and fall on their face. They just think there's something. I mean, people wish that about me all the time. And, 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 and that's not how humility is. See, you haven't learned anything yet. And, 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 and so we, we, we understand that charity doesn't envy. Watch what else charity, charity doesn't do. It's not like that. It, it's not, it pushes itself down. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. Vaunteth means push itself forward. That's what it means. Vaunted not itself. It doesn't push itself and say, hey, wait, wait, you forgot about me. You didn't thank me. You thank her and him. I did more than either of them. Charity doesn't do that. Why didn't you buy me a gift? Then you, then you try to put guilt people because you're trying to guilt her. You just don't love me. Why? Because you're, you're, you're pushing yourself forward so everybody, everybody will notice or do something for you because you're not humble. You haven't pushed yourself down. Vaunteth not itself. Um, verse 5, Do not behave itself as unseemly. Seeketh not her own. Is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. That's, that's what real humility is. Now, let me just pick on us for a minute. <laughs> I, I, I have fun doing this when I, when I go to some country. Every once in a while, I'll just say, tell me what you think of Americans. And when you ask that, they get really hem and haw. They hem and haw a whole bunch, depending on the country. But there, there's very humble cultures, and by nature, they're very humble. And you ask them, tell me what you think of Americans. And they'll, they'll, then they don't want to say anything, but eventually they'll tell you. Basically, what they'll say is, they're very arrogant, and they're very pushy, and they're very stubborn. That's what we are. Now, you might not know that because you've been... Some of you, most of you have been brought up in America the whole time. But, you know, do you know how good of Christians some cultures by nature become? Because their, their culture is a humble culture. Uh, perfect example, Samoans. Samoans, it's a very humble culture. You ever talk to them? Oh, it's, it's, I'm, so glad, I'm so glad to meet you. This is my grandma. I'm going to take care of her. Uh, and, 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 and you know what? It's so good to serve God. Anything needs done? And because there are, the, the, it's, there's something about the culture, because it's, it's, every culture has their strengths and weaknesses, and they have that, that humility, they're, it's very easy to take a Samoan and make them a good Christian because they're already humble. An American, you have to... They have to stop them saying, well, I already know. Well, you know what? I already know all about God. You know, you know what? I, I don't ask me to do anything in the church. Don't try to boss me around. That, that's where they start because they are opposite of humble. It's where they start is, I am, you just need to worship me and let's start there. Okay, that's, that's, where, that's where the American mindset starts. And, and to push them down. <laughs> I remember somebody, the lady came to our church says, look, I, I, she said, I have done all kinds of ministries. I've done this. I work for this pastor. I work for this national ministry. I headed this up. I can take your children's ministry. I can do this. I can do this and all this stuff. And she kept on telling me all her titles. I said, you know, all we need right now really is someone to clean the bathrooms on purpose. And she says, you know what? I, I don't think I, you know, I, that's not what I want to do. And they said, yeah, we really got a position for you then. She never came back to church. That was our first service. That was the last service. Why? She's so far, uh, when you got to exalt yourself and you want to just be in charge right away, <laughs> and look, you know, I'm not above scrubbing the toilets. I do it often. Not because, not because, you know why? Here's, why, why would you do that, Pastor? Because it needs done sometimes. <laughs> and it doesn't matter to me who does it. 
Do you want to be the one to do, do it? I don't care. You understand? I don't really care. I don't care who vacuums. You'll say, Pastor, why are you vacuuming the floor? Because there's stuff on it. <laughs> and everybody thinks, ooh, that's really deep. No, it's not. They're literally, if you want to vacuum it, go ahead. Really? It doesn't matter? It doesn't matter to me. I don't care. It, it doesn't matter. It's all about what needs done. And it's not about me. Okay? It, it, there's things I like doing more, but sometimes I'll find someone in the church who needs to do some ministry. And you know what I do? I say, hey, I got this job that needs done. It's really kind of a fun job. Let me show you how to do this. And I'll let them because they need it. I don't need to do it to be encouraged, but it's going to help them grow spiritually. And it's not about me. So I'll do something else. Because, because you push yourself down, it's, a, it's, it's about not putting yourself first. It's, it's, it's that. And, 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 and being humble and just saying, I don't matter. I just want to be used. Just whatever needs done. Don't put yourself first. Don't, don't. Well, I don't want to do this chore. I don't want to do this job. I am better at this. Nobody notices that I do this anyway. Nobody appreciates it. It's not about you. That was number one. Number two, it is not a negative self-awareness, but removing self-awareness. Humility is not a negative self-awareness. It is removing self-awareness. Let me go back to Romans 12. Real important here. So if LeBron James or Michael Jordan, if I walked up to them and they were humble, I'd say, and they say, I'm trying to be humble. I said, are you a good basketball player? No, I'm the worst basketball player in the world. That's called lying. That's not humility. But that's what we think is humility. But it's not humility. It's lying. And, and it's not what it is. Romans 12 says we're supposed to think honestly and soberly and clearly about ourselves. Uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 3. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. If we have many members in one body, all members have not the same office. Understand that. We all have different jobs. We're all better, good at different things. God's given you something. So we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one of, uh, and it members one of another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given unto us, whether prophecy, let us prophecy according to the proportion of faith or ministry. Let's do our ministry God has given us to do. It's about being honest with what God's given you to do. God's given you some gifts. I'll show you Paul saying, hey, I'm good at some things. Okay, First Corinthians chapter 3. Because that's just thinking soberly. First Corinthians chapter 3. Look, Paul starts uh, all these churches. He's starting the New Testament church. He has these incredible conversions. He has these churches going. He, everywhere he goes, revival breaks out and great things happen and souls are getting saved and people are getting built. And he's training Timothys and Titus and all these things. What's he supposed to say? I'm terrible to ministry. No, obviously God's using him. He's been gifted for a certain apostleship. And it says in verse 10, According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, another buildeth thereupon, but let every man uh, take it out that beareth thereupon. And he, of course he says, look, God gives the increase. And, and he knows that. But he said, look, I'm, I'm a wise master builder. I know how to build lives. Right? That's just being honest. It's, 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 it's not... It's not, so, so, you know, if Derek says, I, I, just know, I just don't know anything about laying floors, he knows how to lay floors. If one says, I'm the worst, I'm the worst detailer in the world trying to be humble, no, he's lying. You follow? You should rejoice that God's given you a gift, given you a gift, and let God use it. And, and, and it's not humility. What it is, is when you kind of lose your self-awareness. The reason I'm the best basketball player is to help my team win a championship. The reason uh, you have a gift, the reason you're good at this thing, the reason you're good at cleaning is not to walk around and say, you guys are terrible at cleaning. If I had cleaned, this would be a lot better. That's not why God made you a good cleaner. Cleaners. 
cleaning Nazis. That's not why God made you like that. Guess why I made you a good cleaner? You may have a guess. So you can clean. Isn't that deep? And that's why God made you good at that. You love giving. God gave you that. Why? So you can give. I'm the worst giver in the world. No, you're a great giver. God gave you a gift. Use it. I'm a pastor teacher. My, my gift is a pastor teacher. I can teach the Bible. That's my gift. Okay? That, that's, I'm not supposed to say, I'm the worst teacher. I just won't even get up here. Because I won't get up here if I sit here and kill myself all day and, say, and just kick myself all day long. You just be honest with what God, gift God's given you. Give him glory for giving you a gift and use your gift for God because it's not about you. You're just part of a body that God's put together and, and, and it's not about you. C.S. Lewis said that the best way, he said this, he says, humility is not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. Humility is not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. That's what it is. It's not a, a negative self-esteem. God made, uh, made, made you gifted or God made you for a purpose and you find that purpose. You rejoice that God's using you and God gave you a gift. You thank God for that, but it's not to exalt you. And, and it's not for you to choose in your life what you do and whatever God gives you, you humble yourself and do and rejoice that you get to be used by God. Number three, it is about not being self-willed. Let's go to Titus. Let's tr start. Let's go there. Titus. Humility is not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. <coughs> Titus chapter 1, in verse 7. Uh, for this is a pastor requirement here, for a bishop must be blameless the, the, as a steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry. Okay, it says you're not supposed to be self-willed. Pretty simple. Not getting a wine, not a striker, all that stuff like that. But he's not supposed to be self-willed. Second Peter, in chapter 2, in verse 10. But chiefly then that walk after the flesh uh, in the lust of uncleanness and despise government. The second Peter, chapter uh, 2, in verse 10. Presumptuous are they, self-willed. These are false prophets. These are self-willed. What do I want? What do I want? What job do I want to do? What do I want people to notice about me? What do, uh, I, uh, wh wh why, uh, what do I want people to notice about me? You walk into every situation saying, will they notice me? Will they like me? Am I going to be happy? Can they do anything for me? Can I get anything out of this? I don't want to do this. I like this. I want this. No, I don't want to order that. I want to order this. It comes appetizer time. Anybody have any? What do you guys want for appetizer? I want this! Before anybody else can breathe. But all of a sudden you're there, and, and you're a person who's humble and not self-willed, and they're at appetizer time, and they remember, Pastor Brown doesn't like spicy, and I love spicy but I want to be a servant to Pastor Byram. And I'm not going to order spicy. I'm going to order regular hot wings. I want regular hot wings. That's the whole sermon is about getting to that point right there. When you eat with me, you'll do that. And, and, and understand, but you understand that's, that's not being self-willed. But I, I, I don't like that kind, but it's not about you. You're not self-willed. But this is my favorite chore. But I want, it. I want to read this book. I want that pen. Do you know how detailed self-will gets? I want the remote. I don't like that mouse. Here, give me your mouse. You ever had five? You ever had five daughters in one brush? Self-willed. When, you, when it's, it's, it's about you. It's not about being self-willed. Jesus, <clears throat> while alive, that's all he did is live for others. He was tired and he fed everybody. Jesus 
Listen to this. Jesus knew he was a bread of life, and he said it. I'm the bread of life. He said, I am the light of the world. I'm the living water. Okay? But yet Jesus is called the one who humbled himself the most. Yet he said, I'm living water. I'm the bread of life. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. I'm the light of the world because he was. He wasn't saying, I'm terrible. I'm the worst savior there's ever been. He was not there doing that. Okay? But he was pushing himself down and saying who needs served. He said the truth about who he was. He had to. Yet, he was a servant. He called himself the good shepherd. Yet, Jesus says, not my will, but thy will be done. The disciples' feet needed washed, and he washed them. Why? Because he was pushed himself down. Let me teach you how to serve. I'm going to wash your feet because you need to learn how to serve each other. In order for you to learn that, because you're all going to say, what about me? I'm, why, is, uh, why do I have to wash the feet? He's the one who's got the worst stinky feet, and, 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 and I'm better than him, and he's, I, I've done more miracles than him. Jesus says, look, I'm just going to sell this issue. I'm going to wash your feet so you learn how to serve each other. Because if I can wash your feet, you can wash each other's. Because not about me. I'm doing this for you. He touched and healed the unwanted, the unloved, the diseased. He was exhausted, yet he still went on. He died for sinners who didn't deserve it because it wasn't about him. When two people in the house are saying, you do it, you do it, you do it, the humble person just says, you know what, I know both of you uh, are busy, you know, like that, I'll, I'll go ahead and take care of it. You guys, you guys go ahead and finish up what you're doing. You know what, it's no big deal, we don't need to fight about this, I'll take care of it. Even the person, even though they've already done more than anybody else. Because they're humble. They push themselves down. Proud sounds like this, I deserve... Nobody appreciates me. I want. Don't they see I'm better? Their peace is better than mine. How come they always get recognized when I do more? Humble says, you need some help. What needs done? Are you doing okay? He stay accept. I, don't, no, don't worry. Th thanks for letting me help. Don't tell anybody I did this. Here, I know you're having some problems here. Here, take this. Just don't tell anybody about this. It's just thanks for letting me help you. That's what, what humility does. I'll give you some money, but you know what? You owe me, and you quit wasting your stinking money, and you know what? Everybody see this? Humility just says, I have money, they have need. What about my money? I was going to go buy a four for four. It's not about you. It's not about you. When the liquid spills over here, by the way, because we got this whole thing professionally cleaned a week and a half ago, um, immediately things spill. When that happens, it doesn't matter who gets the stuff. Daniel went over to do it, and Zach went and did it, and it doesn't matter. So, it, stuff spilled. Got a pregnant lady. Somebody go clean it up. We'll 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 we'll, we'll be angry at her later. And uh, and 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 was it you? It was Zach. Ah, oh, I can't fire him. He leads songs. And, uh, and, 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 but you know what? We go and see the wife always gets blamed. Don't, don't they? Some of the Genesis that started there. The white woman thou gave us me. And, 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 but you know what? It doesn't matter who cleans it up. You know what? If I go look at it tonight and I see, ah, oh, it's still a mess. It's going to stay in the floor. That's by what's brown, brown, brown carpet. And, and I say, oh, you know what? It's still not clean. Why didn't they clean it? Don't they know I'm tired? And no, it doesn't matter. I'll clean it up. Why? It doesn't matter. I'm not there. I don't matter. You don't, you're just a tool of God. Humility just pushes yourself down. And you say, my parents are tired tonight. I'm going to go, I'm going to let them go to bed early. I'm going to take care of stuff. 
My child's tired tonight. You know what? I'm going to take care of stuff. Let them go to bed. My child's tired. Didn't want to do the homework. I'll do it for No, don't do that. And, uh, and all the kids, yes, I like this pastor. And, uh, and, and, and you're saying, well, what is he's done? Because it's not about you. And humility just pushes yourself down. It's just down. You become a servant of all. Humble yourself. You'll be exalted later. And God takes those humble people. And when they've humbled themselves, God lifts them up and blesses them and gives them blessings and good things. They don't have to manipulate and cheat and work every angle because God's already taken care of them because they've humbled themselves. Amen. Not walk around, I'm so terrible. I'm so bad. It's like Eeyore on steroids and you're always walking around. Oh, poor me. And it's not what humility is. Humility is not thinking bad about yourself. It's stop thinking about yourself. Just stop thinking about yourself and just see the needs of the people and be a servant and whatever the cause of Christ needs and, and whatever I have to do in life. And, and, and you know, can I tell you, it's not that hard to do most anything in the world when you're not thinking about yourself. You just kind of, yeah, I get to do this. Look, God, God left me some opportunities tonight. <laughs> and, and you don't get mad because you have to do something because you're just, yeah, this is done and God's given me this to do and I'm good. Because you don't matter because you've put yourself down enough where you're not self-willed and it's not about you and you're just walking along happy every day. And when somebody else does something, you enjoy it. When somebody else recognizes you, you're thankful for it. But you don't need that because you're humble. Amen? You see the difference? Quit bashing yourself and talking about how terrible you are and, and just start enjoying what God's given you to do and just push yourself down and just start serving. You'll be happier being a servant than you will trying to get everybody to serve you. The Pharisees are miserable, grumpy guys. They're always trying to get exalt them in the highest place and everything. And when they wanted to get in the very highest seat and they didn't quite get the highest seat, like, oh, why does that guy always get the, why do they think he's so great? And they're just sitting there all grumpy. Because they didn't get all they wanted. But when you don't want anything, you're happy. And so be humble and understand that. And, uh, and, and you can do that. So the Lord took me and said, I'm going to teach you a new level. I'm going to make you misunderstood. Just deal with it. <laughs> and he said, ah, man, i got to go through this. i got to be a little more humble so I don't matter. I don't want people. I want people to think. You say, Pastor, you want people to? Yeah, because I'm human. We all are like that. But humility is not trying to make people think bad of you. You just don't even think about what people think about you. You're just doing what he's done. You're, not, you're just pushed down like Jesus did. Push himself down. You're a liar. You're not telling the truth. Huh? Okay, anyway, I got to heal some people. <laughs> That's pretty much what it went like. All right, let's pray. Father, help us to uh, follow your word and believe this and live this. And I pray that we'd learn true humility. And I pray we'd learn that humility is to stop thinking about ourselves so much. Thank you, Lord, that we're all just sinners saved by grace. So, so we can all just start there. We can all just start with this, the Lord's mercies. We're not consumed. And, and after that, we don't need to stick our heads up and be proud. And Lord, if Jesus can do this, we can do this. I pray tonight we learn true humility and follow the Bible way. Thank you for the truth of the Bible. Thank you that, uh, Lord, someone here might have a gift that everybody else doesn't notice. Somebody else might um, do some real important things, but nobody else notices. And somebody else might get noticed all the time, but they not, might not be humble. Lord, thank you. Keep track of all this. Just help each one of us in our lives to, to uh, humble ourselves so you can exalt us in due time. Pray in Jesus' name.